Welcome to the Zoom Bible study. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. My prayer is that you will be blessed, encouraged, and inspired by it. Tonight is the seventh lesson in our Bible study titled, Wandering Heart, Figuring Out Faith with Peter. Peter is the apostle most people identify with, mainly because his faith journey often looks like our own. Like us, Peter's journey with Jesus had its share of ebbs and flows and zigs and zags. As the Sacred Art series writes, Peter's journey is not polished or linear or perfect, but he is always tethered to the love of God. When you look closely at Peter's story, you find Jesus at each step along the way. The title of each lesson in this series is inspired from a phrase from the classic hymn, Come, O Fount of Every Blessing. This series, the series from Sacred Art, does not cover Peter in the book of Acts. So the lesson tonight is totally from me. Fortunately, I didn't use all their lessons, so I will. I still have one unused phrase from Come, O Fount of Ever Blessing. So tonight's lesson is, here's my heart, based on the hymn's last line, here's my heart, O oh, take and seal it, seal it, seal it for your very own. I actually think that line fits the Peter that we find in Acts in our last lesson, we looked at Peter's Easter experience as well as the one-on-one -on -one encounter with Jesus in John 21. And in that encounter, Jesus forgives and recommissions Peter after his Holy Week failures. And Peter does not waste the new beginning that Jesus provided. You can see an outline that I've given you about Peter's actions in the book of Acts. Everything from how he stepped up to preach on Pentecost, and then in the next chapter, chapter three, uh, he and John heal a disabled beggar. Then, G then Peter preaches uh, at the temple. Uh, and then in chapter four, Peter and John are arrested and appear before the Jewish council. In chapter 5, the apostles are imprisoned, uh, and Peter is the spokesperson for them. In chapter 8, Peter and John are sent to preach in Samaria. Remember, they weren't too crazy of Samaria uh, when Jesus was, was walking with them. And then in chapter 9, Peter heals a paralyzed man in Lydda, and then in chapter 9, Peter raises Dorcas, whose Hebrew name was Tabitha. Peter raises Dorcas from the dead in Joppa. As you can see from this outline, the Apostle Peter dominates the first part of the book of Acts. And here's what I want you to notice. There are no traces of the stumbling and bumbling Peter who often spoke before he thought. There are no traces of the two steps forward and then one step back Peter. And the Peter who was timid and scared and hiding behind locked doors, that Peter is gone. We now see a Peter who is bold, a Peter that is aggressive. And whenever he was questioned by the temple authorities, and later when Herod Agrippa I ramped up his persecution of the church, Peter never blinked. So what is the explanation for this drastic change in Peter? The resurrection of Jesus. Jesus' forgiveness and recommissioning of him and of course, anytime you deal with the book of Acts, you're dealing with the power of the Holy Spirit. When Jesus was vindicated by God by the resurrection, 
And when the apostles encountered the resurrected Jesus, seeing with their own eyes that the power of death had been defeated, it transformed them and gave them a boldness that not only changed themselves, but changed the world. When death, which was the empire's ultimate weapon, was made moot, fear was gone. Nothing held them back. Let's remember that we, too, should live transformed and emboldened in spirit-filled lives in our world. The power of the resurrection and the power of the Holy Spirit is available to us as well. Now, the primary passage for tonight's Bible study is the account of Peter's visit to the Gentile Roman centurion named Cornelius. It was one of those pivotal, history-making moments of the Jesus Revolution. Now, the account is too long of a story to read in this brief Bible study. If you want to read all the details, it's found in Acts chapter 10, and I'll do my best to summarize it and point to a few highlights. Cor Cornelius was a Roman military commander who lived in Caesarea. Cornelius, uh, in Acts 10, is described as a devout, prayerful, and generous person. He receives a vision from God, and in that vision, he is instructed to send for Peter, who was in Joppa. Meanwhile, back in Joppa, God gives Peter a vision. In the vision, Peter sees a large sheet lowered to earth, and on it were all kinds of unclean animals and birds and reptiles. A voice tells Peter to get up and kill and eat the food. But Peter pushes back because Scripture had told him to avoid unclean, non-kosher foods. But then the voice responds, don't call anything profane that God has made clean. As we like to say in the United Church of Christ, our God is a God who is a still speaking God. And when Peter woke from the vision, the delegation from Cornelius had arrived. And so Peter goes with them. By this time, Peter had figured out that his vision was God's instruction for him to go and share the good news of Christ Jesus with a Gentile family. He is welcomed by Cornelius, and Peter begins to preach. So Peter said to them, I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every people, anyone who fears God and does what is right is acceptable to God. This is the message God has sent to the people of Israel, the good news of peace proclaimed through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. You yourselves know what took place throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee with the baptism John proclaimed. You know how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, and how Jesus went about doing good works and healing all who were in the grip of the devil, because God was with him. We are witnesses to all that Jesus did in the countryside and in Jerusalem. Finally, Jesus was killed and hung on a tree only to be raised by God on the third day. God allowed him to be seen, not by everyone, but only by the witnesses who had been chosen beforehand by God, that is, by us, who ate and drank with Christ after the resurrection from the dead. And Christ commissioned us to preach to people and to bear witness that this is the one who's set apart by God as judge of the living and the dead. To Christ Jesus, all the prophets testify that everyone who believes in him has forgiveness of sins 
through his name. And that's Acts 10, 34 through 43. As Peter preaches, the Holy Spirit falls upon the Gentile believers, and later Peter baptizes them in water. It is through Peter that the gospel initially crosses the boundaries to include this huge group of people known as the Gentiles, pretty much everybody but Jews. So that means no more exclusions. The good news of the kingdom of God is inclusive. What we have in Acts 10 is a snapshot of the kingdom. Jews with Gentiles. Gentiles wanting to be with Jews. And it is at the table of the Lord in which all come together to eat and all come together to live in peace, all by the grace of God. And here's why I think this is even more important. Later, when the Jerusalem Council assembled because of Paul's outreach to the Gentiles, in which he preached that Gentiles did not need to be circumcised nor keep the Torah in order to be Christian, it was Peter who took the side of Paul by telling the council about his visit with Cornelius. In my opinion, Paul needed the gravitas of someone like Peter to stand with him in that moment to help make the argument that God's boundary-crossing inclusive gospel was for all. Now, Paul and Peter had some disagreements later on, but in that moment, they stood side by side. And from that moment, Paul became the apostle to the Gentiles. Peter played a pivotal role, though, in making that happen. And the after effect of the council was that Christianity would spread to the ends of the earth. What a life. What a journey. Peter had dropped his nets, walked on water, professed his faith, been rebuked, received foot washing, denied Jesus, witnessed the resurrected Christ, was forgiven and recommissioned, and truly became that rock that the early church needed. And I hope that throughout this series and looking at the life of Peter, that we take inspiration from his story. His story became a part of God's story and it changed history. And let us remember that our lives and our testimony are just as important and our stories too become a part of God's story. Through the ups and downs, zigs and zags of our faith journey, may we know, like Peter knew, that we are forever tethered to the love of God so that we, like Peter, can give witness to the life-changing, world-changing, inclusive, loving, and victorious gospel of Christ Jesus and the kingdom of God. And may we collectively pray that last line of come, O fount of every blessing. Lord, here's our hearts. Oh, take and seal them. Seal them for your very own.